Hi everyone, I'm Diane Powell, Chair and CEO of the Hypersomnia Foundation, and I'm here today with my fellow board member, Sarah Beasley. Hi everybody. So we thought we would take a few minutes to talk to you because the Hypersomnia Foundation has just launched a new website. Still at the same address, hypersomniafoundation.org, but we thought it'd be helpful to explain a little bit about how the new site is organized and to show you some of its features. So um, Sarah, maybe you could start us off by talking a little bit about why we felt we needed to revamp the website. So over the last few years, HF has added a lot of new resources uh, to our website, such as our medical alert card, our anesthesia guide. We have a lot of updates on clinical trials, um, information on our patient registry, just a lot of resources. And we decided that it's really hard on the old website to find those resources and see what we actually had available. So in thinking about the revamp of the website, we thought about all the different kinds of people that come and visit our site and what kind of information they're actually looking for. And so looking at this, we actually came up with four main groups of people and those are the newly diagnosed patients and their supporters, medical professionals, and research and pharma companies. And so we decided we actually made four main new pages that are linked for these groups off of our, off our uh, homepage. And on these four pages are all the re is all the relevant information that we thought for these main groups. Okay, it sounds like, well, it's time for us to pull up the site and let people take a look at exactly what we're, we're trying to describe. Good idea. So Okay, and here we are on the home page. And before we walk through it together, I'd just like to mention that anywhere on the site, you can get back to the home page by clicking our logo in the upper left hand corner. It's on every page of the site. And across the top are the drop down menus that hold all of the content. Of course, visitors to the site can just explore through the top menus or they can scroll down and perhaps recognize themselves here. And should we start firstly with the newly diagnosed page? Sure. Now I know that you, as our patient advocate, had a lot of input on this page. Could you explain a bit more about why we felt we needed a page for people who are newly diagnosed? Uh, yes, of course. Um, because we know that when people are first, very first diagnosed with a rare sleep disorder, there's almost always a steep learning curve. What is this diagnosis? What does this mean? Are there any treatments available? So we thought it would be very helpful if we provide a specific section for these people um, under the newly diagnosed to give them a place to start and to point them in the right direction. As you can see, we have came up with five main categories and this should point anybody that's newly diagnosed, um, take them down the right road. Right, great. So people can work through that at their own pace. Yes, that's right. Okay, and let's go back to the home page and look at the section for patients and supporters. I'll just click there. Yes, again, so again, you can see we've organized the information into sections. We have learn about IH and the related sleep disorders, how to advocate for yourself and how to get involved. Again, all the information, articles, and resources related to these three um, headings are clickable underneath on those in the blue italics. Right. Um, this is also a great place to, start, uh, to send your family members or friends um, if they want to know a little bit more about your condition and perhaps how they can help. Okay, and back to the home page, we can see that there are two other pages. Um, we won't go to those today. They're generally for healthcare providers and researchers, so of course anyone's free to look through any part of our website. But um, let's go back to the top and work our way from left to right through those drop-down menus. Great, so if we start with the about IH and the related sleep disorders, uh, this is where you can go, obviously, to find information about idiopathic hypersomnia. And as you can see, the related sleep disorders are listed there. Um, also, uh, if you're looking for treatment options and what's available, those are there too. And also the classification of hypersomnias is also there. And then if you move along to the next section, that's the patients. Again, you can see that newly diagnosed and patient support and supporters. 
Um, and then the next one down there is the healthcare provider directory. Right, and um, before we click on that, I just want to point out the article below on how to choose a healthcare provider. There's a lot of good advice there. So let's take a look at the healthcare provider directory. Can you walk us through that a little bit? Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, so if you, uh, we also have a section right there to join the healthcare provider directory, and that's obviously for uh, sleep professionals. Uh, but if you carry on down, we have a great uh, search bar right there. So you can put in the city or a state that you are living in or close to, and um, up will pop up whoever is in that city or state. As you can see, we've got uh, somebody in the UK, England, London, which is wonderful. We're always trying to improve on and add to our list um, of physicians from the US and from around the world. So if you have a sleep doctor that you like, please uh, let them know about our healthcare provider directory and um, tell them to come visit our site and perhaps they want to join. It's very easy for them to join. And of course it's free. Great. I'm really pleased about that new, uh, new search uh, bar. It's much faster and much more efficient than the one on the old site. So that's, that's a great improvement. The next drop down menu is for professionals. Again, though, anyone can come and take a look. Um, just like to mention briefly that it does include information for researchers about our research award program, which we've recently expanded. Mm -hmm. The next drop down menu. If you'd like to know more about what clinical trials are happening or find other ways that you can help researchers, you would this menu. And Sarah, why don't you start by talking about our international patient registry? Yes, of course. You can join our international patient registry if you have IH or a related sleep disorder. It is free both to patients and researchers. And we're excited to say that we currently have over 2,000 participants registered and that the data collected has been accessed by researchers and pharma companies. And as you scroll down, if you are interested in joining the patient registry, please check out the FAQs. Uh, which is a little further down right there, uh, which should answer all of your questions about what the registry is, how it works, um, how your personal information stays private, and who the registry is through, which is Sanford Healthcare. And I know some people decide to uh, remember to update their registry information by doing it each year on their birthday. So. That's a great idea. Thank you for that. If you'd like to know about other research studies uh, in that drop down menu, we've got currently recruiting studies and again, participation FAQs so that you know a little bit more about what it's like to participate in a clinical trial, what your rights are, and so on. Yes, there are actually quite a few open right now. So if you haven't checked these out, please do so. Great. And of course, at the bottom there, we also have completed studies and results. Moving on to the right to news and events. Uh, Somnus News is our email newsletter and you can sign up for that on any page of the site. Stay in touch with HF just by putting in your name and your email address. This comes out periodically. We do not clutter your inbox and it has um, information like new clinical trials, new developments in research, the things that are of most interest and importance to our community. Events, um, obviously now in July 2020 as we record this, it's not possible to have any in-person events, but any of uh, virtual events we may have would be listed here and any other events where we're representing the, um, the needs of our community are also listed there. So Sarah, would you like to walk us through our list of resources because that's quite a long list and a main reason why we reorganize the website? Yes, of course. Um, and again, all of these resources are linked from our main pages, um, but if you just are looking for a specific resource, this is a great place to come. So let's, um, uh, so uh, first of all, we have the Amnesia and IH guide. Anybody that has IH or a sleep related disorder, this would be really important to print off and share with your physicians if you uh, need surgery, um, as anesthesia can affect those with IH and related sleep disorders differently, so please share that with them. Next on the list is our education essentials for students. Let's click on that, Diane, quickly. This is an amazing um, page of resources for students and for their parents, uh, K through 12, and higher education, those in college. 
um, about how to get help if you need it, what's available to you, how to explain to your teachers and counselors about what's going on and share um, everything with you. We also have uh, links to other things, but it's really a great resource for you to go there. Then if we go back and have a look again, next down on our list is our glossary. This used to be a medical terminology. Uh, you can look up any word here. Um, hopefully we have most of them. If you find something that isn't on there, please let us know. But anything from medications to sleep tests and what they mean, you will find here. And also all of those glossary terms are underlined throughout the website. So if you're reading an article and you come across a term like the Epworth sleepiness scale and you want a definition, you can hover your cursor over that and the definition will pop up. So you don't have to keep going back and forth to the glossary as you read. Yes, that's very useful. Um, next, we have our HF brochure, which is self-explanatory. This you can print off. Again, I should uh, point out that all of our resources are free and you are welcome to download them and share them with whoever you would like. Um, but our HF brochure will give, uh, you can share this with your medical professionals or your teachers or friends and family. It will give you very, it will give them a very brief overview of IH and the related disorders. Um, the next one down there is the IH summary characteristics and diagnostic criteria. This uh, basically will be for professionals um, and should help them. The one following that is your medical alert card. Anyone with IH and sleep related disorder should print this off and have it in a handy place, whether it's your purse or your wallet. Um, it will just say if something happens to you so that it makes everyone aware that you do have a sleep disorder and who to contact. The next one down there is your personal journey stories. Uh, this is a great resource. Uh, lots of stories that people with IH and related uh, sleep disorders have written about their journeys from uh, symptoms through their diagnosis and to where they are today. Uh, great perhaps for anybody that's wondering if they're the only person out there experiencing what they are to have a read and perhaps can relate to some of these stories. You can also uh, send us in your own personal journey stories. There is a link on that page to do that. Right, and the next self-advocacy tip, Sarah, I know that you authored that for us. So mm -hmm. can you tell us about that? Sure, if you want to click on it, Diane, um, go ahead. So as we all know, uh, it uh, takes a long time from uh, starting with symptoms to being diagnosed to finding a treatment that perhaps works for you or doesn't work for you. And it's really important that you um, become your own self advocate. And that means um, if you read down, yep, you can see it means representing yourself to the best of your ability. Um, there are lots of really great resources here. It teaches you how to communicate effectively with your healthcare providers uh, to explain how you're feeling um, perhaps help uh, make your appointments go uh, become more efficient and clearer so your doctors understand what is going on with you and the decision making process. So yes, please uh, go through this. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, helpful tips in this yeah. brochure. All great information and um, includes this section on negotiating for yourself and getting support, which is so important. Then if we go back to that list again, so we have the sleepy students hint test and the sleepy patients hint test. These are really for professionals, uh, it, medical professionals and for educators. And we know that they come across a lot of sleepy patients and students and there are lots of different reasons for people to be sleepy during the day. And um, this test just will help them to perhaps, depending on how they answer the questions, realize that perhaps that they, these people need to be referred for further testing from a sleep doctor. Right, so we're not asking anyone to use these to diagnose. Um, and last year we took these to places like uh, conferences for college health providers, school counselors, medical residents. We're just trying to, to um, encourage people to put this on their radar when they're dealing with a, a sleepy a student falling asleep in their class or a patient whose sleep issues can't be explained by anything else, just to put it on their radar that they might have one of these rare sleep disorders. Yeah, that's uh, very important. 
Um, and then the last on our resources, but certainly not the least, is our videos and podcasts. These, this, again, is another great resource. Um, there are a lot of doctors and researchers that give um, from our comp that have presented at our conferences, and also you can see they're non-HF conferences, but research. Um, we also have some podcasts there, uh, lots of really interesting topics and related topics to IH and the sleep, resort, re uh, sleep disorders. Fantastic. So, yeah, please spend your time and explore that. And now we come to our last drop down menu. And if we click on the first item there, it's a page that um, not only shows our mission, but as you scroll through, it describes our values, our goals, our history and achievements. And I hope people will take some time to look through that. We know there's a lot of work to do and we're determined to get it done. But I hope it's encouraging to people to see how much we've accomplished as a young foundation. Going back to that last drop-down menu, you can explore the biographies of our board of directors, our medical and scientific advisory board members, and you can take a look at our annual report section if you'd like to know more about HF's activities. Our 2019 report is due out in early August of 2020, so just um, in a couple of weeks. That's great. And it actually highlights how much we did last year, Diane. I didn't realize mm -hmm. until I started looking through it. We had a very busy year, but very exciting year. Yes, it certainly was a very full year. And that brings us just quickly to our donation page, because I'd like to have the opportunity to thank everyone that supports the Hypersomnia Foundation. We're a nonprofit, 501c3, and we see all the matching donations, the designating us as a charity when you shop online. Um, the Facebook birthday uh, fundraisers, and we're extremely grateful for that support. Anything else? Um, yes, of course, we, we do know that the website will continue to expand. Um, for example, we're currently working on gathering information on insurance issues and disabilities, and that content will be a major addition to the site. Definitely, that's always a major issue for a lot of people in our community. Okay, so thanks everybody so much um, for listening to us and coming along in our journey and looking at our new website. We hope that you enjoy it and you take the time to explore everything. Um, please remember it's a work in progress. We know that there are going to be tweaks and things that we have to change. And uh, please let us know what you think about it. We'd love to have some feedback. That would be awesome. Um, and uh, please follow us on social media and uh, it's been great talking to you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Sarah.